Hi, Miss Martins. This is Sarah, your resident fitness doyen, which means respected person. I said it last time, so I'm going to say it again today. And this is the Fit Spartans podcast. We have, again, our fitness intern instructor, instructor attendant, Taylor, on our show. Um, and today we're going to talk about a little bit about coronavirus. I know that you're sick of it. We're going to talk about it as it relates to fitness centers and gyms. And, um, and we'll talk a little bit about abs and thigh gaps as promised. Um, and right now we're just at our houses still, probably pretty soon we'll be back in the rec center. Um, yeah. But still socially distanced. Mm. And honestly, I am, I'm so happy to be home just because, I guess I could turn this light on. So I'm just sitting in the dark. Yeah, um, that's better. Because my office is so hot, and it's not just the temperature, it's just yeah. that there's no airflow. Mm -mm. Yeah, because you're like in a room, in a room, like in this little tiny spot, yeah. And there's no vent, and I honestly think that I lack oxygen. <laughs> I know that sounds Probably. like an exaggeration but every day during the afternoons there I just would get so foggy and unproductive oh. whereas here I mean I think everybody kind of has the afternoon slump around two or three ish yeah. but yeah. here I can like take the dogs out real quick or I'm at a standing desk right now, and I don't really have a great, I'm sitting at a chair, but I don't have a great chair, so sometimes I'll just, like, lay on the floor for a second, and then get back yeah. to work, and I can't really do that at work. No. <laughs> I mean, I could if I got out a yoga mat and everything, but it's just more of a to-do. So, is there, like, there's no, like, AC, like, nothing is blowing in there ever, or is it just, like, Oh, gosh. No, never. It's not like something's turned off, if, that, if that's what you're saying. Asking, yeah. because it used to be a closet. Uh, oh. Ironically, the actual closet's like, you know, the cleaning closet, sort of, not the one that's directly next to the water fountain, but the one that's across from the water fountain. Oh, yeah, yeah. That has a vent in it. <laughs> Why don't you switch those out? Like, put your I office could, in there. Yeah, I think my office is actually a little bit bigger. But honestly, I wouldn't be opposed because... You could get some oxygen. <laughs> I could get some oxygen. And if people are being loud in the group fitness studio, I can still... Oh, my gosh. What well, wasn't that... I don't know if it was... It was a class, wasn't it? It was like in the spring, or it was, I don't remember. My class? Bob. No, it was like a different class. It was like, I think it was oh. for like the theater majors or something. You're, or thinking it was of, something. you're thinking of the self-defense class. Or it was something. They would like scream or yell or something. That's the self-defense <laughs> class. Yeah, there was a, I think you guys were doing, <laughs> this is so funny. You guys are doing a podcast, and I think like, in the middle, or, like, they started, like, screaming, and then Dallas was, like, well, then. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, that would get old, or just, yeah. And sometimes people go in there and, like, practice their little dances and stuff, and it's, like, yeah. you can only listen to a Drake song so many times before you lose <laughs> your mind. Yeah, at least you're not there, like, closing because you like on what was it Wednesdays mm -hmm. or Wednesdays, like eight to like 11 oh I know it and they would yeah and there'd be like a bunch of people like we had issues with that because there would be people that were like we reserved this room and then we have like three groups of people come upstairs and be like well we no, no one reserved it um yeah just yeah craziness yeah I know so, or, I don't envy you guys no or it's the I've seen some people go in the racquetball room which is like okay because it's like soundproof but I mean there's no mirrors in there and I feel like if you're dancing I mean it's kind of hard I don't know but yeah it's nicer yeah 
Um, so if you're listening to this and you need to practice with your campus group, make sure you go through special events reservations. But now uh, it'll be good in a way because only 10 people are allowed in that room as of right now. Yeah. So, and the wall is gonna stay open for airflow, which actually that transitions well into our topic of coronavirus yeah. and the fitness center. So in the group fitness studio, and some people have never seen it as one big room, but it is actually one big room. And then we have the wall divider. Um, and so that's going to stay open. And as of this recording, it may likely change to be slightly more like 15 people, but um, only 10 people are allowed in there at a time. So yeah. theoretically, if there's a class or something, that's like nine people and then the instructor. Yeah. And about how many people? When I was listening to that webinar on Tuesday, they were talking about like, just like, you know, instructing and the whole Corona stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember they were talking about how like everything is changing so like fast. So it's like, right, like you were just saying, like it's 10 people now, but then like two weeks, three weeks, it might be 15 people or there mm -hmm. might be like all kinds of different rules and stuff. So I don't yeah. know. So were they saying it's changing fast in terms of what people are recommending? Yeah, pretty much. Or just kind of like, what yeah like how many people could be in a room and what, what, like if you should like wear masks in like these places or like what the instructors have to do and mm -hmm. just certain stuff like that so what did what were they saying the instructors have to do i mean what when they they were talking about like the instructors it was mainly like how many people can go in a room and then they were mentioning how like little things that people don't think of Mm -hmm. when it comes to like being safe and like you know like the social distancing kind of thing like mm -hmm. when like at the end of the class and everyone has to like wipe down mats you, know, you have like everyone just goes over by the wipes. you know to grab those wipes so they were saying like certain things like we're gonna have to be like smart about it and be like okay you know kind of make this like I don't know they're just saying like certain things you don't think of mm -hmm. you know you're gonna yeah. have to think about for sure. Um, for me, with you guys, one, we're not allowed to buy anything right now. So that's its own problem. But I wanted everybody to have their own little mic cover so that we're not sharing the mic cover. And then you can wipe down the rest of the mic and then just put your own cover on it and still disinfect your own cover in between. But um, yeah. Yeah, that seems like something to think about, uh, especially in our space. I think normally we can fit about 40 people in there. So to be less than 50% occupancy, I think we would be, you know, safe around 15. Yeah. And especially for um, like working out. Um, Sorry, Jayla just posted something. I was going to say, I think there was a... Jayla's trying to join. Um, but what I was going to say was six feet is probably not enough for working out because you're breathing heavy. Yeah. So that's why we're like when we are taping the floors and when we're putting the equipment upstairs in the basketball court, they're probably closer to 10 feet apart. That's six yeah. feet apart. Treadmills too, especially treadmills. Oh yeah. Well, the thing I was, okay. So I was thinking about this yesterday, just a little bit. Um, so like, you know, when you're in like the weight room and like you're using like this certain area, but then you have to walk over to like this area. Well, I don't know, like, I've ran into a couple people where it's, like, you know, I think it was, I mean, this is kind of, like, switching around, but I went for a run last weekend. It was outside, like, on this trail, and it went around this, like, lake, mm -hmm. and there was this lady, you know, there's, like, the whole six feet apart thing, so, like, whenever you ran around her, she would, like, put her arms out like this, and, like, 
she like jabbed me one time and it's just I don't know I feel like in it like going back to like being at like a gym like like a like weight room it's like you're gonna have to like move around I mean I know you don't want to be like on top of people when you're like stationary but you're gonna have to move around so I feel like people that are so like oh my gosh it's like to me I feel like that's just kind of like maybe stay home or I don't know like I feel like if you're going to be out doing stuff like, yeah, we have to be safe, but we all have to do it together. So yeah. it's like one of those things where it's like, don't come off. And yeah, that's the part that I'm kind of curious about because I haven't ran into a lot of people like that, but there are some people that are, are very just like, oh my gosh. But it's like, okay, if you're that, that concerned, I mean, maybe just wait a little bit until it's more like, I don't know. That's just me. But it's like, I'm all about being safe, but like, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I know, wearing, like, in wearing a mask helps a lot of that, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so one thing that happened to us, we were walking the dogs outside on like yeah. one of those wide bicycle path trails. Mm -hmm. And the woman, first of all, her dog wasn't on a leash ever. So she stopped put her dog on a leash and put a mask oh, on just I to pass that. us for the briefest of seconds, even though we were definitely far enough away because the path was so wide. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so in the weight room, we may have, you know, like they do at the grocery store, flow of traffic, so go this yeah. way. So that might be one way to sort of help people having to pass each other in close quarters all that much especially because we do have three doors in there so it shouldn't yeah <laughs> really be an issue um if people are only coming in certain doors and only going out certain doors yeah. um and then i know that it is uncomfortable for people to wear masks and i don't believe again like this could all change but at present we're not requiring masks um as long as you're able to stay socially distanced yeah and my hope is that by spreading all the equipment out it should be very easy for people to stay far enough away from each other um it's just a matter of whether they actually will or not. Yeah, that was another um, topic they were talking in that webinar saying like, you know, especially now with like everybody coming back to the rec center and like seeing their friends and kind of like, you know, they're like, how do you keep people like that, you know, like apart? Like I know they're friends and everything and they're like hugging and they're happy to see each other, but it's just like, I feel like they were saying you're just going to have to draw that line just to be like, all right, I know you guys are best friends, but you know, cause it's just, yeah, that was one thing they said that was probably gonna be the hardest part was everybody coming in, coming together and seeing each other. Cause it's like, you know, with the whole social distancing thing, especially like in the weight room, I know a lot of girls and I know a lot of guys too, that like to work out together, mm -hmm. but it's just like, I feel like that's going to have, that's just going to be a little different, I guess. Cause like, I remember being in the weight room a couple of times. There was like a bunch of guys that would just like rotate off the same machine. And like spotting like, each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, and especially rotating off the same machine. It's like, if you're sweating on that machine, then your friend goes on that same machine. I mean, I feel like it's just, yeah. That's I like already that's, a little gross. <laughs> yeah, it is. I've seen it. Oh yeah. I can't even do it with my sister. Like if we're like benching or something, and I'm like really sweaty or like she's really sweaty. Yeah. I don't, I don't care who you are. I don't want to lay on your sweat. No, I, I would wipe it down before boyfriend. you went on there. That's gross. Yeah. yeah. That is gross. <laughs> I've seen it. And I'm just like, Oh no, that's gross. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So there's that. Um, what else are we doing? So I already mentioned on our Instagram story what equipment we're moving upstairs. Hey, Jayla. Hey. So everybody, this is Jayla. She is also one of my interns. We're just talking about coronavirus and fitness centers in general, but also our fitness center. Um, so we're moving upstairs the three pieces of equipment that were behind the treadmills, which were the back extension, the lateral shoulder raise, and the crunch machine. The biceps curl, the seated dip, 
the uh, converging shoulder press, the seated chest press, the seated leg curl, that's all going up to the basketball court. And then the white dip station slash pull up station is gonna go, I think to the group fitness studio instead of upstairs, but it might go upstairs to the track. And then glute ham raise might go to the group fitness studio. The little like 45 degree glute ham yeah. raise. So I'm, I'm excited to see what the weight room is gonna look like. Because to be honest, I don't really use any of that stuff anyway. I mean, there's a couple things that I use, but not enough to, it's going to be like, oh my gosh, that's going to suck. Yeah. Yeah. And then, oh, isolateral pull down. Since I figured we already have the lat pull down, down in the gym. So the isolateral one's like the one with separate. Yeah. Which I do use that one, but again, it's like, okay, we already have the lat pull. So if you wanted yeah. to, you wouldn't have to be walking all over the place to do your workout. Well, so. Yeah, one thing is to you just go to one space, do your stuff over there, and then if there's a, I mean, you know, instead of, because I was thinking about that too, I don't know if that's going to increase more traffic, because more people are going to be like, well, this, I thought this was down here, and then going up, I mean, but I guess you'll. Well, that's why there. we're doing this right now, and why I'm trying to yeah. get the word out in advance, so people that, they know what to expect, basically. Yeah. Have either of you gone to any other fitness centers? Yeah, um, we have, I've been to the one, uh, Laura Athletic Club, it's in Gastonia. Mm -hmm. It opened a while ago, but it was because they had, they're also like a meal prep thing, so they got like approved to open up. Mm. I mean, they didn't do anything different. I mean, there was a couple things like, you know, like the cardio machines and everything, but there weren't like X's on the floor or anything like that. But also it wasn't that big of a problem because a lot of people didn't go. Like there was probably like five or six people because it's part of a, like there's these loft apartments and it's in the basement. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like in an old mill. So, yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, it was pretty nice because like nobody was there, but like, yeah, they didn't, I know like they were at cleaning everything. Like every time I was there, they, like everything, like, you know, the stuff that you put on like the cable machines, like, yeah. So, yeah, but it wasn't that. Crazy. Like it felt kind, it felt normal, you know, for the most part, but I feel like it's also different, like at Upstate and what we have to do is because, you know, like I remember reading this thing where it was saying like, especially at a university, you have people coming from like all over the place, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like, we're all just kind of like, you know, at least at a, a normal, like a gym, it's kind of like local you know, same community, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Where, where'd you go, Jayla? I went, um, I went with my sister actually somewhere in Spartanburg, but it was like, a kind of what Taylor was saying. It was just me, her and the trainers. So it wasn't like oh. a traffic, but they did have, um, signs up just like a six feet warning, how you see everywhere. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. he was sanitizing after each workout we did, but nothing, no different like protocol. Mm -hmm. My friend goes to boot burn camp in Spartanburg and that's like a circuit training gym. So normally you know, you move from station to station, mm -hmm. but right now I think they're doing it more like group fitness where you get your equipment at the beginning of class and that's it. Like you're not sharing with anybody and, yeah. um, they're also operating at 50% capacity. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And then I know cycle bar and this is my opinion, but <laughs> cycle bar, they, they have their bikes farther apart, but I don't think that they're far enough apart. Because I don't know if either of you have, I mean, Taylor, you did, you took the cycle bar class with us, right? Yeah. It's like, you're dying in cycle bar. You're breathing <laughs> so heavy. I feel yeah. like those bikes need to be like pretty far apart. Yeah. yeah. And as they are, like when they're, I mean, I know when we were outside, they were probably were like a little closer to you than they would be when you're like actually in. I don't think so. No? Oh no. They're pretty they close were, together. Yeah, because I was right next I to Asher. I hate when I get put next to a smelly person. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I got put next to Asher. And we were pretty close. Like, that, yeah. So especially if they, like, even if they skipped a bike, that's still, yeah. like, yeah. yeah. That's true. I didn't think of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that was a hard, oh, my gosh. We were dying. That is hard. <laughs> Asher has 
a lack of cardiovascular fitness I've learned. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I didn't, I, I would never guess that from him. I would think like just seeing like, you know, cause he's in pretty good shape. So yeah. it just, you know, you just kind of put two and two together, but sometimes it ain't like that. <laughs> we went hiking last year and he was like way behind everybody. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm hiking, pretty slow. I'm hmm? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hiking, I, I start out fast and then I slow down, but I'm not like trailing behind. That's funny. <laughs> I'm slow going down because I am like cautious. Oh, yeah. I feel like going like down is worse than going up. For me, at least, because going down, I feel like it's just like my knees, and then you got like not the gravity slip. pushes you. Yeah. yeah, my knees kill me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay, I've I thought of another announcement that's different about the rec center, and this is for the first time in over five years because that's how long I've worked there. All of the sinks in the women's bathroom work. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> so there shouldn't be any congestion at the sinks because now there's four. Yeah, I know. it's been five years. Over five <laughs> years because I started in September 2015 and they didn't work then and they hadn't worked prior to me coming to upstate either. Wow. Yeah, because all like what was the two sinks that were on the right, they both like Nope, nothing. And it, what I wanted to do, because honestly, it never really was that much of an issue. Um, mm. But, you know, it's like hard to do this, I get. Um, and there's no outlets there. So it's not like you can blow dry your hair or do anything like that. Um, yeah. So I wanted to just like cover up the countertop and make it like, make it a vanity where you could just get yeah. ready. But anyway, now the sinks work. So <laughs> no excuse not to wash your hands. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, I feel like they should have, yeah, like, they should have made it a vanity, because there's only that one area in, like, where, like, the lockers are, but that's, like, yeah. a one person, like, yeah, yeah, that's it. So, it's, like, that's it. so if one person is getting ready, then you can't. Well, yeah, and I feel like, I especially, like, in a gym locker room, like, that's where people, like, work out and then get ready for, like, work or, like, something else. Yeah. For yeah. class, I know people definitely get ready for class straight from leaving there, so that would be mm-hmm. helpful. That's mm-hmm. true, actually, especially the swimming classes. hmm yeah. yeah. That'd that's be really true. helpful. Well, can't say <laughs> that that'll happen anytime soon, but anyway, at least it's not a totally useless area now. Um, yeah. Knock. I don't know what it was. Okay. I that too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That was weird. Maybe it was a bird. Um, bird finally calmed down and went back to sleep. He just gets in these moods sometimes where he just needs attention right now. Really? And he will, oh, yeah. He'll just like stare at you until you pet him. Well, I know. When you turned the camera before we started, he was like deathly staring at you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Now he's chilling. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so the uh, abs, the egg abs. Oh. Which one you want to tackle first? Whichever one you want to start with. Okay, let's start with abs. I was going to say, yeah, let's start with abs first. Because I feel like the thigh gap, it was a thing, and it still is, but it's not like. So, yeah. Yeah, let's start with abs. Okay. So, are we talking about, like, how do you get them? I feel like people think, okay, like, I feel like, yeah, like, if you want to, like, muscle-wise, you can, like, grow, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, like, showing your abs, I feel like people think that, oh, let me just do a bunch of ab workouts, but eat, like, crap. But if I do a lot of ab workouts, I'll get That's abs. Me. I'm That's you. <laughs> I'm people. <laughs> you're, you're an exercise science major. You should know better. Not eat crap, but yeah, I forget <laughs> that eating healthy goes hand to hand. That is the, I think that's the hardest part for most people. Oh, really yeah. Hard to eat yeah. Healthy. 
especially when you're not used to it. It's so hard. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, it's got to be, I mean, that's a whole topic for another time, but like diet culture in general is so backwards so that bad. people make themselves miserable for no reason, basically. Um, yeah, there's all those like diets and it's like, you're not supposed to deprive yourself. Yeah. Right. Or like the whole like cheat day thing. Cause like I have a, one of my friends, she was like on this, like, you know, she's losing weight, but she ended up like plateauing because her cheat days, she would like go crazy and it would just be like, because she's depriving I feel like, and then she's like, ah, I need to eat everything. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, like the whole, yeah, that whole thing is crazy. Yeah. But so abs, um, I, and then there's also, and this is, this goes into basically any muscle group, especially with women. They're like, oh, well, I don't want, I don't want bumpy abs. I just want the line down the middle. Okay. I don't want bumps. Like, (laughs) trust me, like, that's not going to be a problem. It's very hard to get the horizontal line. Once again, that was me in high school. I feel like we all started there at one point, but we got to evolve. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard that. That's funny. Oh yeah. I hate <laughs> it. My I used to have an eight pack and it was like and I was like, I just want a flat stomach. I don't even want this. And all the girls in my high school were like, You're so lucky. I'm like, no. And now I wish I still had it. I know, right? Yeah. That I, I had one in yeah, high school too. But I feel like my just I don't know. I don't ever do abs. Really? Maybe like once a week. Yeah, mm-hmm. during my class, maybe. Yeah, that's like <laughs> during my class. Yeah, I know. Same. Yeah. <laughs> I hate doing abs, so I try to work it into whenever I'm teaching a class. Yeah, I never. I mean, maybe that was because, like, okay, so in my high school, we had this like new athletic trainer, and he was like in charge of like every sport, and this was what you did. Like our our weight room at my high school was massive because mm-hmm. it was like they just redid it, and he totally cut out abs. Mm-hmm. Cause he was just like, you know, when you squat, you use abs. When you, he's like, I'd rather do like functional movements that engage your abs. So maybe that, like, just from high school, it kind of just like, just yeah. I don't ever do abs. Like, I might do like two ab workouts before, like, I'm like, you know, oh, I haven't done abs in like a week. But it's mm-hmm. just like I feel, yeah. Yeah. So that that brings up a a good point because you got to think about why are you doing abs um and then that's going to dictate how you do them I do think that there is a place I know there is a place for core work to help support your other movements like your squats your deadlifts your just anything that requires you to stabilize through your midsection um But when a lot of people do abs, they're not doing abs um, to stabilize. They're doing like crunches or really high volume um, flexion, which is not, so stabilization, I mean like your ability to control your midsection. So if you're doing like a bunch of flexion in the form of like 20, 30 reps of crunches, you're not gonna get the most out of that exercise. So here's the guideline. Um, Because it's important to work on strength for your core. So thinking about strength, when you're working on strength, are you doing high reps or low reps? Strength? Mm-hmm. low reps mm-hmm. yeah so your ab I always I always mess it up abdominus rectus that is your spinal flexor and it that's what you really want to like build up your strength with so that's like the superficial ab muscle there so instead of doing 20 or 30 reps of crunches it might be better to do like hanging leg raises are really hard. I can't do very many of those. Oh, they are. Or like a weighted, you know, with the cable, like a weighted crunch to where you can't yeah. do 
a whole ton um or maybe even like something more explosive like going down into the crunch and catching the medicine ball and then coming up and throwing it um that's that's what we want there then for the deeper abdominal muscles transverse abdominis we want to work on stabilization because that's going to help make your whole midsection more stable and prevent injuries in your daily life but also in your squats and your deadlifts so to work on stabilization that's where we get into planks and then every like variation of a plank that there is so lifting yeah. one leg up lifting one arm up but keeping everything in the middle of you completely still while you're adding this instability to that motion so if you can't just do the plank really well then work on doing the plank really well before you're going to like make it unstable basically yeah does that make sense yeah mm -hmm. um of course as aesthetically both of those things are gonna like build up those muscles but it's not gonna make any difference unless your diet is different if that is your goal if your goal is to like show your abs then there's got to be a dietary component which uh, i know everybody hates hearing but it is what it yeah. is yeah that is true yeah if your goal is like for your abs to show ask yourself why is this my goal <laughs> Because if you don't really, really want it, it's not going to happen. <laughs> and I feel like that's like one of like the main things, like one of like, especially like when I have my classes, like when we had them in person, like in the fall, everybody would always ask me like, how do I do this? Or I want, you should have classes that are like, you know, abs or I want like my butt or it's just like this or that. Mm -hmm. Like very specific body parts. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, no. Or you know what? Have a class for booty building like that. That would like definitely come to that. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, no, it would definitely do well. But oh, okay, so remember, I said like unless you really, really want it, it's not going to happen. Or caveat: unless you stop thinking about it completely, but you train for like the purpose of some some performance goal mm -hmm. like improving your squat if there's a certain number you want to squat or uh, if you want to get really good at the form of one thing like if you stop thinking about getting abs sometimes that helps you get abs yeah yeah because you're not like We're making yourself over crazy it. over yeah. it yeah that's true yeah for that Mm -hmm. I don't know and one of my like things that like going back to like your diet and stuff just like what helps me especially like with eating certain foods I kind of like sometimes like think like okay will this be good for me like will my body use this or is this just junk and sometimes it helps me like nope I'm gonna find something else because that's just not gonna do me any good because I don't mm -hmm. know that for me has helped me because it's just like an extra like Take a second just to think okay should i really like sometimes i don't care because it's just like you know yeah. what i'm gonna eat this i don't care but like yeah. when it's like just a random thing during the day it's like okay I'll probably find something else i think like like jlo saying it's hard to eat healthy and i think in part i mean there's a million different reasons um but satiety is so important meaning well not only satiety but like satisfaction if you are actively avoiding eating the junk thing mm -hmm. but then you end up eating like a million other things because you're not satisfied with those other mm -hmm. healthy things like yeah. you should have just had a little bit of the junk thing yeah yeah People that try to like, I feel like my friend, I think she was either trying to do vegan or vegetarian. She ended up just eating a bunch of carbs and sweets. And I was like, you're kind of feeding the whole point because now you're just like supplementing the meat with sweets. 
Yeah. I was like, you're not even yeah. helping yourself. Yeah. So was I'm she like, doing oh. that to lose weight? Yes. Okay. Was- well, you need to tell her to listen to our other podcast. I don't remember which one it was. Where we talk about because we we talked about like vegetarianism and veganism, mm-hmm. um, and how basically if that's how you wanna lose weight, then it's not a good way to lose weight. Basically, yeah, you know? yeah. Especially going from eating whatever to trying to because I was like that's not gonna work because you're just eating sweet stuff. Yeah. Ugh. Well, and I feel like if you're okay just for like me if i was gonna go vegetarian or vegan it wouldn't be for the purpose of losing weight it would be my beliefs and stuff right. like what i thought was right and wrong yeah true. you can still eat me i mean <laughs> <laughs> i don't know yeah that's the only reason that's the only way i would ever mm-hmm. yeah so i think so there's this website called eat this much are you guys familiar Mm -mm. Mm -mm. it's awesome if you want me to like walk you through it sometime I can show you what all it can do but it it allows you to select very specifically what you want for your eating plan kind of a thing I do think it does help to work through it with somebody that has some level of education about nutrition because if you didn't know anything, you were going, you were going in there and you were like, okay, I'm going to do vegetarian because I want to lose weight. Like, okay, that's probably not maybe the most helpful thing for you. Um, But anyway, it's really cool because you can select um, your macronutrient ranges. You can select, um, you want it to give you foods based on a grocery list. So a lot of meal plans will give you completely different meals every day. And you're like, my grocery list is going to be super long. So you can organize it by reusing the same types of foods in your meals. Um, Yeah, I heard about that where you can like mix up, like you can buy like the same like five things, but you mix them up. So it seems different. different. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So anyway, I'm, I'm thinking about this because, um, I would, I don't really eat that much meat to begin with. I was thinking about this the other day, like today I had Kodiak cakes for lunch and for dinner I'll have meat, but usually like earlier in the day I don't have meat. Um, yeah. but anyway, I was using that website to get some ideas basically for, a like ovo, lacto, pescatarian, so like eating fish, eating eggs, eating dairy, but not eating poultry or red meat. Yeah. Um, I think that would be relatively easy for me most of the time. That would probably be easy for me too, because I stopped eating, like I still eat meat, but not, yeah, like kind of this, and like I don't eat meat a lot. So that would probably, yeah, that would probably work for me too. Yeah. Just. I don't know. My body sometimes doesn't like it when I eat. Like, okay, chicken, I'm usually safe. Okay. But if it's like, yeah, like red meat, like, you know, like beef or Mm -hmm. whatever other. Yeah. Sometimes my stomach is like angry like why did you eat this really like also yeah it did like sometimes it's fine but sometimes it's not like for me it's like if I don't eat like say like a burger or something like that for like a while and then I have one yeah my stomach is just Hmm. angry yeah last weekend I made lamb stuffed grape leaves (laughs) so that was so good Lamb is probably my favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every time I think of lamb, I think of, like, you know, like, in, like, a euro, that, like, oh, my gosh, so yes. good. Oh, I love a euro. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I'll still eat my lamb and my grape leaves, but that's, like, a special thing. That's not yeah. – I wish I could have it every day, but it takes a lifetime to roll all the individual grape leaves. Yeah. So – but next time I make some, if you guys want to try some, I'll bring you guys oh, yeah. some to try. That one. That'd be good. Um, I hate cooking chicken because I hate dealing with the raw product and I hate disposing of the like carton and like that slimy thing that's at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm not a big chicken fan. Yeah. I go through phases where it's like no more chicken. I don't want to look at chicken. I don't want to smell it. I don't want nothing. Yeah. But like the raw meat side. Okay, this might sound gross, but like I'm used to dealing with raw meat because growing up, growing up up north, my family was all into like hunting. Mm -hmm. So whenever we brought like a deer home, we would cut that meat up ourselves, grind that meat up ourselves. So like Dealing with raw meat doesn't necessarily bother me as much. I mean, it's so gross. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't know. It's, like, something about the poultry specific. Yeah. Like, red meat really doesn't bother me as much. It's, like, yeah. salmonella. I don't know. I don't know. Weird. Well, and isn't weird. it, I heard that chicken especially is, like, one of, like, the most dangerous foods to, like, mess with raw. Yeah. Probably. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, like something like that. So maybe it's that too, because also steak rare, but not right. Not chicken. Exactly. Yeah. In a, another part of our Lebanese meal that we would have typically at Easter time would be kibbe, which is raw beef. Sounds yeah. gross, but I swear it's not. It's like, and then in the Italian culture, they have beef carpaccio, also raw beef. Also delicious for the okay, okay. If people eat it and don't get sick, I'll try anything usually. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It is extremely good. Whenever whenever things get back to normal, if you get the opportunity to go to a really nice Italian restaurant, try the beef carpaccio. And then you can go back to eating vegetarian, whatever, <laughs> like all the rest of the time. <laughs> um, because, yeah, I don't know. That's a whole thing. Shall we talk about thigh gaps, even though we kind of like touched on it a little bit in yeah. terms of like body spot reducing sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me say this one thing <laughs> because we were talking about, oh, you know, I want abs, but I don't want bumpy abs. And then people also are like, okay, I want to grow my butt, but I don't want to grow my thighs. And but I don't want to grow my thighs, but I do, I want to get rid of my hip dips. You know what I mean? Might as well just yeah. go in there with a knife and do it yourself. Cause it's they don't so want to. It's so specific. Like <laughs> yeah, no, I've heard that too, where it's like, people are saying like, you know, I want my thighs to stay the same, but I want my butt to be lifted a little bit. Or it's like, yeah, stuff like that, where it's just like, I don't know what to tell you. Cause whatever I'm going to tell you ain't going to like, so Instagram has everybody in a whole different mindset. And um, oh, yeah. Facetune. Yeah, that's too much. That's way too much. Yeah. Yeah. I said once that I think that like Facetune and Photoshop is sort of like a way of psychological self harm because. Yeah, I mean, you're wanting, you're putting something out to what you want people to think you look like. Knowing like, it's not you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but my personal opinion is that if you want to, I mean, if people say they want to grow their butt, they don't like to hear this term, but what you're telling me is that you want to gain muscle in your butt, even though they're like afraid of gaining muscle, but that's what you're telling me you want to do if you want to grow a part of your body, um, unless you're just talking about getting fat there. Um, yeah. which is also a thing. Um, but, oh yeah, <laughs> I had a, one of my roommates, she wanted her term of, she wanted to get a bigger butt and like, you know, a little thicker thighs. But what she was meaning by it is I want to gain weight. I don't want to work out. I just want to gain, like, that was her way of, yeah. I mean, that's not necessarily the healthiest way to do it, but I mean, Whatever. You can't necessarily control where your body gains oh. fat. Exactly. You can't just gain fat in your butt. <laughs> yeah. Like you're going to no. gain it everywhere. Wherever it wants to land. Mm -hmm. With yeah. the thigh gap and the abs, I feel like people forget that like our bodies, like it, it depends on so many, like, there's so many different variables. Like some people can eat junk food and still have a flat stomach and not work out. Like I know plenty of people yeah. and then some people are working out eating healthy and they still don't have it. So it really just depends on who you are, your genetics, your body, like, it just everything. Oh, goes yeah. Through. Yeah. And then how you look is just like a very small 
indicator of what your actual health is because those people that you're yeah. talking about that maybe are a little bit heavier but they're eating well and they're exercising mm-hmm. that person's probably healthier than the person eating junk that still has a flat exactly. stomach oh yeah very true metabolically true anyway yeah. what'd you say so yeah, yeah. skinny fat <laughs> um yeah in my well, classes, okay like in the group fitness classes, what yeah. I find, so, and this is, a, this is not a reflection on me. I know everybody thinks, oh, Sarah's so hardcore. I always give modifications for the record, but <laughs> like on day one of class, there's always like one person that falls out and is like, oh, I feel sick. I need to go to the bathroom. Mm. It's almost never an overweight person. Yeah. It's usually a thin person that I, I mean there could be a million different reasons maybe they're like blood sugar or they're not hydrated or i don't know what but yeah like weight is yeah it less. doesn't tell the whole story yeah well somebody told me this last weekend and i'm not sure if this is true or not that's why i want to address it but someone okay. told me that like speaking about like genetics and stuff like sometimes you're like you just get genetics where you just gain weight and that's just how it is. Mm-hmm. Who so said this to you? Or you don't have to say their real name, just like your relation to them. Um, yeah, no, nope, I'm going to do that. Cause they're going to know, <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah. So somebody told me that like your genetics, it's like, you're just going to gain weight and you can't really control it. And I mean, okay to a point I feel like because you know like speaking like how yeah like your body and your genetics and like everyone's Mm -hmm. different and stuff but I feel like there's a fine line between you are just going to use that as a crutch because you don't that you just think that's just how your genetics are Mm -hmm. or you yeah I don't know I didn't say anything when she said that because I was just like whatever but I was because I didn't know exactly that's why I'm asking so it's just like I mean I don't know I don't know all the research related to genetics and, and weight, but my first two reactions are one, you know, in the past, like in our lifetimes, people are the most overweight that they've ever been. And our genetics as a society have not really changed. Like we haven't evolved Um, because evolution takes thousands of years so our genetics haven't changed that much and we're still like really fat as a society and then the second thing is um your lifestyle behaviors your health behaviors can impact your genetics so say you are predisposed to being overweight because of some gene that doesn't mean that that gene will be expressed only if your lifestyle is unhealthy will that gene be expressed and will you be overweight so it's not like a for sure oh because i have this gene i'm gonna be fat yeah yeah but i feel like also it's just one of those extra excuses when it comes to not you know, not fully wanting to like invest in your health. It's something like, oh, it's my genes, my or oh, I have this medical your family's condition. Big? No, yeah, I was gonna say people. Would I use feel that. like we let, like, yeah. I mean, because there's like thyroid problems, and that absolutely can determine it. But oh yeah, yeah. your hormones like oh, right play but, like, huge. Everywhere. It shouldn't be a crutch. Like you shouldn't be obese just because your family's obese. Like that's not a reason. And if you do have issues with your hormones, that's even more motivation to get your health right. together so that you don't yeah. have worse problems. Exactly. I feel like people think like, you know, going back to like all like the excuses and stuff, but it's like, if you actually don't let that control your life and you're actually healthy, it might not affect you as much right. as it did when you were unhealthy. Because even if you're unhealthy, you have all these other issues. So it's just like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like most people don't really think of that. Yeah. As like exercising is like the best medicine, like just, or just being healthy. So it's just like, but you'd rather take like all these medications and just kind of be upset that you, you know, I don't know. I feel like our government and society go into that too. I learned that in, um, I forgot what 
class it was lifestyle related diseases where it's just like okay. we would rather put in money for the i forget the word they use but that versus prevention like we pay all this money for like diabetic medicine like medical expenses as opposed to preventing yeah. well, right there's, there's so much lobbying from pharmaceutical companies from like agricultural companies um because they need to make a profit so like Jaylee, were you you were in my lifelong health and wellness class right i think so yeah so i like in that class i'm like these are the government guidelines mm -hmm. you can make your own decisions <laughs> but like i don't follow these right <laughs> But I can't, I, because it, those are the government guidelines, I can't say, like, don't do this. Yeah. And it's not that they're necessarily even bad, but it's just, it's just not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Because if you're, if you're, like, a really muscly, big person, you can probably afford to eat a much larger amount of carbs without mm -hmm. transferring, uh, converting those carbs to fat. Yeah. If you're active, you can probably afford to eat more carbs, but if you don't work out and you work a nine to five desk job all day, you probably don't need very many starchy carbs. Yeah. Also back to the thigh gap. Yeah. Um, I mean, for like the true like thigh gap, whatever, isn't that have something to do with your bone structure as well? Because there's this girl on Instagram and she's like, actually like, she's like one of those like real people. Like she doesn't Photoshop. She just says it how it is and stuff. She has a thigh gap. And she said like growing up, she was really self-conscious because you know, she just had bigger, like, I don't know if it's like her hips or something like that. So she's like, you know, sometimes thigh gaps aren't, po aren't possible for some people. Cause it's just yeah. your bone structure is just not, you know, or a thigh gap, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, that's definitely the case. So you can look this up. There's something called Q angle, especially in women. We have like a high Q angle, which can cause a lot of knee problems, but that can contribute to the thigh gap. So I think it's from, it's like a triangle shape from your side hip bone to your knee to like your pubis bone mm -hmm. so okay. the larger that angle is from your hip bone to your knee like that mm -hmm. the more likely you are to have a thigh gap or something but you're also probably gonna have like very painful knees but yeah I don't know I don't know the whole like science of it mm -hmm. One thing is too, especially like when you're young, it's like, yes, I probably had a thigh gap when I was like 12, but I was also a stick. I mean, you were a child yeah. when you were 12. Yeah. <laughs> no, me. So it's just like, yeah. Cause I know like, um, one of my friends, she was like, I used to have a thigh gap. And I was like, yeah, when you were like eight. <laughs> right. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and call it there. Um, cause we're going to run out of time. So thank you everybody for listening to the Fit Spartans podcast with Sarah Taylor and Jayla today. If you like our show and you want to know more about the Spartan Rec YouTube channel, or please leave us a comment on our Spartan Rec, uh, Instagram account. It's at Spartan underscore rec. And you can join us next week.